With the Academy Awards right around the corner, I thought I'd do my top 8 Best Picture nominations. Now, letting you know guys, I had to make a lot of hard cuts throughout this list. And just letting you know, all the movies that are nominated for Best Picture, I have reviewed, so if you have my reviews, go, wa go watch them right now. Also, if your favorite movie is like not as high as you would like it to be, just please your, keep your comments mature. But without further ado, let's start off with number eight, which is Boyhood. Now, if you saw my review for Boyhood, you shouldn't be surprised about this. But I mean, if for those of you who haven't seen it, I'll just go over a quick recap about Boyhood, in my opinion. Boyhood, it's an overall good movie, but my problems with it are just mainly it's right in how long this movie is and about its pacing. <sighs> I mean, I think a lot of critics tend to focus more on the concept of it, which is a really cool concept over the actual writing. Yeah, if you watch this movie, you'll realize that the writing is just very generic and it would have been better if it had been unscripted. Or better yet, better scripted overall. But of course, this movie's probably going to win lots of awards just because of the concept alone. Don't worry, Richard Linklater is not a bad director, but as a writer, yeah, he better think twice about writing. Okay, number seven is the Grand Budapest Hotel. Now, a lot of people have been saying that this has been one of the funniest movies of the year and it's been one of the best movies. Really? Because I just found it to be better than Boyhood. And it's a really good movie. It has a really good story, has really good cinematography, and really well acted. However, it's just, there was a lot of comedy there for me personally, and the pacing at times can drag a bit on. I mean, this movie is really good, but Oscar worthy, yeah, I just don't classify this really as a comedy, and I just... You know, if it would have made it a little bit funnier, I could totally see this being Oscar worthy. Okay, number six is The Fury of Everything. Now, I love this movie, and I'm sure a lot of you out there love it too. I gave it a 9 out of 10 in my review. But why is it only number six? Simple answer the pacing in this movie is just utterly out of control, slow. It's just, uh, why do some scenes just drag on and on forever? I feel like that the cop. I feel like that they should have added at least one or two funny scenes in it, like before Stephen Hawking became the man who he is today. But they just didn't do that. It was just kind of sappy at some parts. I mean, this is a really well acted and pretty well written movie, but still, it just felt pretty sappy at some areas. Okay, number five. Now we're getting into the regular pre-2009 Oscar nominations where they just had five films. So I'm just going over the top five. With at number five, it is Selma. Now this movie has been brutally under-nominated at the Academy Awards this year. I mean, first of all, where is David Oyelowo for Best Actor? Where is Ava DuVernay for Best Director? I mean, and where is the whole film for... Best adapted screenplay. I mean, this movie has just been crucially under nominated. And you know, with great acting, great writing, great cinematography, it just feels a shame that only got the only other nomination was for best original song. But then again, why is that number five? Again, with a lot of Oscar nominated movies this year, the main problem was just the pacing, that's all. I mean, but other than that, Everything else is spectacular about this movie. Go check it out. Okay, number four is The Imitation Game. Yes, this is the best PG-13 nominated movie on this list. And there are many reasons why. Bennett Cumberbatch is acting. A lot of Kiara Knightley's supporting role in it. It's really good. The script is well written. The direction is excellent in this movie. Even the cinematography at parts is good. And the pacing. Finally, the pacing is just kept at the right act and it just feels really natural throughout this movie all right number three is whiplash now i only saw this movie yesterday and damn i wish i'd seen it earlier because you know jk simmons is just on top of it he should win best point out there for this movie and miles teller does a really good job as playing this pretentious band student who just wants to get better and better and will stop at nothing to become the best drummer around but overall, I want to give credit to Daniel Giselle for just directing a movie that would normally not get nominated, really. I mean, this is an indie movie, think about it, first of all. Second of all, just some of the things J.K. Simmons might say in this movie just 
might scare off the Academy voters, but I think this is just a movie that everyone should go check out. Okay, number two is Birdman. Now, if you saw my review, I absolutely love this movie, Birdman. And, you know, I'm going to go over why I love this movie. Again, the writing in this movie is excellent. Michael Keaton's acting is excellent. Just everyone who's on the support of acting is really good. And it's also a pretty daring film about a washed-up actor trying to start a Broadway play and going through his mental struggles. I mean, we don't really see that a lot. But probably my favorite part of the movie is just the editing and just... How the movie is kept at just like a one-shot pace, really. It's just really innovative and really creative. And I wish more directors used this. But my number one favorite Oscar-nominated movie for 2014, it is American Sniper. Okay, leave alone the controversies and let Michael Moore get out of the picture. Let's just focus on the actual movie itself. This movie is excellent. I'm just saying right now that Bradley Cooper probably gives his best performance in his career. Yep, that's a pretty bold statement to make. But, I mean, you just see him play this soldier who's just going through PTSD and just his desire to go back to war, but at the same time, him dealing with a family. It's just, I gotta give nods to Clint Eastwood here for just, this is a really good film that he made. I think just, that of all the box office success it's getting, I think it well deserves it because it just shows, like, about, yeah, war is great, but is it really? I mean, it brings up a lot of questions, and minus the so-called controversies that are being pulled out right now, it has some pretty realistic questions. That I think a lot of people should be thinking to themselves after seeing this movie. Well, people, that is my top eight best Oscar-nominated movies that came out in 2014. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give it a like and a subscribe. And until again, this is White Rice sign off. Bye.